Welcome to today's Ask Me Scott Skills webinar series. Today's presentation is Wine Garden Rights, What You Need to Know. Michael Dillon, Field Education Coordinator, Central Region, is your presenter for today's session. My name is Shondell Day. I am with the Education Department at Ask Me International. I will be your host for today's session. Before we begin, I would like to go over a few housekeeping notes. We encourage you to use your telephone in order to participate in the Q&A at the end of the session. Please select Use Telephone after joining the webinar and call in using the numbers provided once you sign on. Be sure to use the audio pin. This number will be given to you once you sign on. All the participant phone lines will be muted throughout the presentation. Lines will be opened up for a quick Q&A at the end of today's session. If you have questions along the way, please enter them using the chat feature to put them into the queue. We will stop at each section to go over answers to your questions. Please take the survey at the exit of this webinar to receive your certificate of completion. You will be sent a certificate by the close of the next business day. Please be reminded that this session will be recorded. And um, if you would please just locate on the right hand panel, you will see a hand icon next to your name. If you all could test this tool for me, just click on it to raise your hand. We will be using this feature to uh, ask questions in the order in which we receive them. Great. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to now turn this session over to Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for uh, Wine Garden Rights. Um, I'm Mike Dillon. I'm a field education coordinator for AFSCME International, uh, located in the central region, based out of the Indianapolis uh, International Office. Um, so let's take a second here to look at what we're going to go over today. The goals are what wine garden rights are, two, the situations in which wine garden rights can be enforced, and three, what to do should an employer deny a represented employee union representation during an investigatory interview. Uh, as we move from the slide, we are now going to take a couple minutes to watch a short video. It's made by your sisters and brothers out on the West Coast, and should grab your attention and understand why we need these rights. find that on YouTube if you look under Ask Me Local 146 and Wine Garden Rights, uh, it should pop up. It's a really good video and they took a lot of time and, and effort to put that together. And as you can see, they want to convey the message that Wine Garden Rights are very important. So as we move forward to uh, the topic, Wine Garden Rights and what you need to know, uh, we can dive right into it. So what are your wine garden rights? Wine garden rights afford a member the right to have a union representative present during an investigation interview, 
which is a meeting with the supervisor when the employee has a reasonable belief that the meeting may lead to discipline. Now, there are three key points to remember from that uh, definition. One, the interview must be investigatory in nature. This means the interview is likely being conducted to determine if a policy, procedure, or a work rule, or some law was violated by an employee. Two, if the interview is investigatory in nature, the member then has a right to have a union representative present for the interview. And three, the member must have a reasonable belief that the investigatory interview may lead to discipline. So what is reasonable belief? Well, reasonable belief is a phrase that starts to get into a little bit of legalese, but it's most easily understood when its usual definition is applied, which says reasonable belief exists when there are grounds that could lead a reasonable person in the same or similar situation to the same belief. So when in doubt, just apply common sense. Uh, for example, it's unlikely a reasonable person would believe a meeting with a supervisor about the department switching to ergonomically designed staplers would lead to discipline. However, it's quite likely a reasonable person would believe a meeting with a supervisor would lead to discipline when the meeting is about the department switching to ergonomically designed staplers because 27 staplers in the department were stolen the previous night. So there are a couple things that you need to know. Every union rep needs to know Weingarten rights are not automatic. Every union rep has a duty to inform the members that the member must invoke their rights if they choose to use them. Every union rep needs to know what actions a supervisor may take after a member invokes their Weingarten rights and requests the presence of a union rep. And every union rep needs to know what a union rep may do when present during an investigatory meeting. So touching on the first subject, Weingarten rights are not automatic. Uh, a lot of people confuse them with Miranda, and they believe that Weingarten is the same as Miranda. However, this is not the case. Uh, Weingarten rights are not automatically provided or explained to a member at the onset of an investigatory interview. Like I said, many people believe that Weingarten rights are the same as a person's Miranda rights, and it's, it's not correct. Miranda rights must be provided and explained to an individual prior to an interrogation while in police custody. While during an investigatory interview, a supervisor does not have to provide or explain Weingarten rights to a member. While a member needs to be aware of her rights, it is important to note that one of the great benefits of a union contract is your ability to negotiate better language than what is afforded to you by legislation and case law. AFSCME has successfully negotiated language in several contracts spelling out circumstances under which supervisors are required to inform members of their Weingarten rights. So if your contract does not have Weingarten rights uh, within it, that's something you may want to make a note of for your next round of negotiations and try and uh, negotiate Weingarten rights within the contract. So what actions can a supervisor take uh, after a request for a union rep is made by an employee? Well, after a member requests the presence of a union rep in the investigatory interview, no one really knows what the supervisor will do with the request. Some of the things uh, the supervisor can do is some will adhere to the law and grant the request made by the member and wait for the steward to arrive. Some supervisors will deny the request made by the member and immediately end the meeting and all questioning, while other supervisors will respond to the request by giving the employee the choice of ending the meeting or continuing the meeting without a union representative. When a member makes a request to have a union rep present, the supervisor cannot select which steward is called in. Additionally, if an employee requests a particular steward and that steward is on sick leave or vacation, or some other type of leave, the supervisor does not have to postpone an investigatory interview until that steward returns to work. And finally, if a supervisor flat denies a request for a steward, the member does not have to continue to answer the supervisor's questions. While the supervisor may continue to ask questions after it's denied, 
the employee should respond to those questions by stating, I respectfully request the presence of a union steward at this investigatory meeting. And once the questioning finally ends, that employee should seek out a local leader, a steward, and make a note of uh, what took place and how the questioning continued, and they were denied the right to have a union steward present. Time for a fact check. Like Miranda writes, a supervisor must inform the employee of his or her Weingarten rights. True or false? Well, almost everyone got it. It's false. Uh, Weingarten rights are not the same as Miranda rights unless they are codified within the collective bargaining agreement. When an employer requests the presence of a steward at an investigatory interview, the supervisor can do any of the following. One, grant the request and wait for the steward to arrive. Two, deny the request and immediately end the meeting. Three, give the employee the choice of ending the meeting. Four, let the employee choose to continue without representation. Or five, all of the above. While the first four are all true, uh, that's, uh, those are avenues that a supervisor uh, can follow. The best answer here is all of the above. Grant the request and wait for the steward and each of the other three that were present during that question. <clears throat> when an employee requests that a steward be present, the supervisor can select which steward is called in for the meeting. True or false? It's false. A supervisor, a supervisor cannot select the individual steward to be called in for the meeting. If the employee has requested a steward that is on leave or vacation, the investigatory meeting is postponed until the steward returns. True or false? That's false. If an employee, if a steward is on leave or vacation or is off for a while, uh, the investigatory meeting is not postponed until that steward returns. Next question. If a supervisor denies a request for a steward, the employee must still continue to answer the supervisor's questions. True or false? That's false. Uh, the employee does not have to continue to answer the supervisor's questions. Uh, but they should uh, say, I respectfully request the presence of a union steward at this investigatory meeting. As we move on, some rights of union reps during an investigatory meeting need to be understood. So when a union rep is contacted by a supervisor to attend an investigatory interview, it is important that upon arrival to the meeting, the union rep asks the supervisor the purpose of the meeting. Once the purpose of the meeting is known, the union rep should request a caucus with the member so the rep may obtain some details of the situation that prompted the meeting, get some background, and also to get the member to relax and together work out a strategy for the meeting. Now during the meeting, the union rep should take notes to document everything that occurs during the meeting. Additionally, the rep has a right to respond to a supervisor's confusing, harassing, or repetitive questions and should also document all instances in her notes of those occurrences. Knowledge check. Let's see what you know. Upon arrival to an investigatory meeting, stewards should ask the purpose of the meeting and the steward has a right to meet with the employee before the meeting begins. True or false? Excellent. Everyone got it right. Uh, that's true. Next one. The steward is not allowed to take notes during the meeting. True or false? Great. Everyone's on a roll. That's false. Stewards should always document, document, document. Next one. The steward has the right to ask the supervisor to clarify confusing questions, object to harassing or repetitive questions. True or false? Great. Everyone got it. Uh, steward absolutely has the right to ask the supervisor to clarify confusing questions, object to harassing or repetitive questions, 
And should that occur, each instance should be noted in uh, her notes. Weingarten writes on cards for members. Uh, they're, they're used frequently, as many locals provide members with cards that have the rights printed on them. Some locals have standalone Weingarten cards, while other locals have leadership and steward business cards for those officials with Weingarten rights printed on the back of the card. Whether it is a standalone card on the back of a local leader's card or in a monthly newsletter, it is vitally important that members know their rights. Distributing Weingarten cards or a newsletter with Weingarten rights in it is an excellent opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with members about their rights, the union, and also to assess their knowledge and level of activism within the labor movement. Now it's time for questions. So at this time, we will be taking a um, few questions from folks. If you all could just please raise your hand to let us know that you have questions. Mike is um, more than happy to answer any questions you have on this subject. So please raise your hand. Hi, Patty. Your phone line is open. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, oh, Patty. good. <laughs> Hi there. I have a question. What is your opinion on using recording devices during this um, this interrogation? Never. Uh, that's thank you. That's yep. my feeling too. And I just wanted to verify that other people are on the same wavelength. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Lisa, your phone line is open. Um, Lisa has typed her question in. She says, I would like to receive official wine garden cards. Are they av available from my council? Uh, you would have to check with your individual council. Uh, many have them. Um, it just depends on the council, but there are also providers. If you Google Weingarten cards, uh, you can find cards available online as long as it's through a union printer. Take that to your uh, local leadership and have them uh, provide cards to the membership. Well, okay. If there are no further questions, uh, Mike's going to share some resources with you. So what we have here are some helpful resources that you can take a look at in your spare time. The first one is the case that gave all of us Weingarten rights. Um, it's a fairly easy case to read, and it's provided at the Supreme Court, as you can see there at the link. The next one is uh, it's an article from um, a law journal and it's knowing when to keep quiet, Weingarten and the limitations on representative participation. It just discusses uh, a union rep's ability and limitations to participate in an investigatory interview. The next one, Weingarten writes, union representation at investi investigative interviews is just a quick summation of uh, union reps and what the representation level is for employees in an investigatory interview. And the last one is just Weingarten rights. It's uh, from Wikipedia, and Wikipedia isn't the greatest source of information. However, this one, this article here is really well done and provides you with background and uh, a lot of necessary tools that you may need in dealing with uh, possible Weingarten violations. Okay, well, that's the end of our webinar. I want to thank everyone for attending um, Wine Garden Rights, What You Need to Know. Again, I want to thank you all for joining this series of Ask Me God Skills. I hope that you will uh, introduce this subject to your coworkers and let them know about the series that we are doing um, and uh, encourage them to join some of these sessions to uh, just gain more knowledge. Uh, please remember to take the survey at the exit of this webinar to receive your certificate of completion. Uh, you will be sent a certificate by the close of business the following day. But please remember to take the exit survey. This feedback helps us to um, build better uh, webinars for you all to uh, um, 
assist us in uh, giving you the tools that you need. Um, so again, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Mike. You are a great, great presenter as always. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for attending.